All right, everybody. I'm gonna give this literally no more than 30 minutes, if that even. We're gonna find. We're. I don't know how this is gonna go, but here we go. <sighs> I don't know where the Pope costume is. We have to get a new one if we wanted to redo the stream. Also, look at this guy. Is that not a pervert? That's gotta be a pervert. So, uh, listen, how is this gonna work, chat? Well, first off, this is not to be considered the actual sequel to the confession stream. This is not that. This is going to be 30 minutes of letting you guys call in. I don't even, this is just gonna be so stupid. I don't even know what to say. The phone lines are now open. I'm, I'm a little nervous. I don't know how this works. Oh, here we go. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. Oh, boy. <clears throat> this is, uh, this is Father Wubby. Is it? Wait. Hello? Hello. This is Father Wubby. Hi, Wubby. Uh, do you um, have a, I, uh, do you have a sin to confess? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm drunk. I'm <laughs> Alcoholism is, is not a joke. Uh, it's not something that I do think I can forgive her for. But worst of all, I think bad content is the is the worst sin of all. Straight to hell, that's a ban. Ah, uh, this is uh, Father Wubby. Give me Father Wubby, for I have sinned. And uh, what is your sin? When I was in third grade, I stole from the public and from a charity. What did you steal and, and from what charity? I was in charge of going door to door, collecting money for Jump Rope for Heart. And there was, God, there was so much so much money that i collected with no receipts they there was no there was no requirement for receipts and i realized at the end of one day do i really want to go jump rope in the sunlight or could i take this 175 dollars worth of cash and i feel so bad because i took it and i went and bought golden eye and a bunch of sour jelly beans <sighs> well uh, thank you for being brave and calling in and um i can hear the remorse in your voice and to be very clear uh i know that god personally always loved golden eye on, on nintendo 64. i also think that and i speak on behalf of god here as well i think that you know jump rope is kind of fucking gay <clears throat> so so gay I, father so gay so um with that in mind with your apologies and uh you know all the context i think that you know three hail marys and, and you'll be okay you'll be good to go man this is fun we should do this more oh here we go another caller <laughs> This is uh, Father Wubby. Father Wubby, yeah. I have sinned, and I'd like to confess. Is your sin like a really bad mic? Okay, so I was in a really bad place several years ago, and I needed to get my rocks off and relied on my ex-boyfriend to, to provide that need for me. However, he was unavailable, so... I texted one of his best friends. And when we were done, I went to text my ex-boyfriend that I had to use his best friend to get me off. And I accidentally texted his best friend. And I had said some stuff that was not <laughs> the best to say. What, what was your name, young lady? Uh, you can call me Eve. Eve. Mm, an angelic name for... <laughs> Such a whore. Now, Eve, I apologize. I use that word in the biblical sense. Dumb, stinky fish whore. Now, listen, Eve, what did the message you sent say? I sent, let's call my, uh, the best friend, Dennis. <laughs> I told Dennis, mm -hmm. I said, uh, because you didn't show up, I had to use Dennis and it wasn't great. Because he had a very small pee pee. No, Eve. Forgive me, Father. I know. Oh, I was in God. a very bad place. I had just gotten through a breakup and I needed somebody. I, I, what? Oh, damn, Eve. Fuck. God damn. Okay, now is there anyone in town that you haven't slept with? I'm kidding, but Eve. I, uh, I live in a new town and I consider myself gay now. So. Do you? Okay. So, well, that, I don't know if that helps your case in this church. This is horrible. Uh, it, it's, it's, I would like to know that this really is going to determine if we can forgive you here. Um, what was the friend's reaction? Did you apologize? Did he forgive you? Were you guys able to make any sort of amends or did you just block and move on? 
I when I realized my mistake, I said, I'm sorry. That oh meant to God. go to so-and-so, but now you know the truth. And then we never talked again. You told him, now you know the truth. Eve, uh, I'm ready for your judgment. Now, Eve, I, I forgive you. I'm Thank a man. You, I am a sinner. You are a sinner. We're all sinners. I forgive you. But in the eyes of God, that is a different story. Now, normally your options are go straight to hell or maybe give a few Hail Marys and we can forgive you. But Eve, this is a, the most heinous sin I think I've heard since the hot dog pussy girl. And with that, you're going past hell. I would say straight to the streets, Eve, to the streets. Holy fucking shit, dude. That is the most horrible shit I've ever heard in my entire life. <laughs> she fucked her ex's best friend out of spite needing to get off. And it wasn't good. Mans didn't have enough dick, apparently. I think I speak for every guy in chat. If I got a candid text like that, I don't care what size my penis is. I don't care how successful of sexual encounters I've had up until that point. I am killing myself. All right, we're going to open the uh, lines back up here. <clears throat> this is uh, Father Wubby. Forgive me, Father Fry of Sin. Hello. What's your name? Uh, I was born Jewish. Oh, straight uh, to hell. A... All right, next one. This is Father Wubby. Uh, what's your name, well, young maybe, man? Uh, you, you may call me uh, Tony. Uh, and what is your sin you'd like to confess? Well, um, well, Father, I would like to uh, regale you with a small tale uh, that occurred mm. uh, very close to uh, my most recent birthday. Uh, I have um, uh, much to chat's uh, uh, dismay. I, uh, I have not uh, received uh, the uh, pleasures of a woman. So, are you a virgin? Uh, yes, father. Which is, I think, that's very honorable. By the way, I thank you. Um, mm -hmm. But I have uh, sought to uh, end Loser. that. Beginning, Can I ask uh, how old you are, Tony? Uh, I am in my late twenties. Okay. Uh, so I reached out to a friend of many years. We had a positive correspondence. It seemed interested in myself. But one day, uh, I called her, and uh, we we met up for a. A rendezvous a dinner of sorts and we you know we spoke at length and about ourselves and how the time had passed and i just laid it all out there i said to her hey i'm i'm looking to smash and uh no matter what happened i had to ask she uh she told me her feelings for me uh, mm -hmm. that for some time she uh thought of me romantically and so she, she was uh unable to uh to 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 deliver onto me the uh the cutty so um tale does not have a sad ending for for father um she and i uh did the next best thing passionate sinful things in the back of my car behind a walmart what um what, what happened in the car? Briefly, what happened in the car at Walmart? My trunks uh, uh, were, were filled that evening. I'm so ashamed. <laughs> I hung up on him. Remember, chat, uh, and very important here, please call in with your sins, not some um, strange Walmart. Did he shit himself? I don't understand. I think he's still a virgin. All right. <clears throat> this is Father Wubby. Forgive me, Wubby, for... I've sinned. You're very quiet. When I was a grade schooler on my first day of school, there was one child who was very clearly autistic. I just thought he was weird. Later on that day, he walked up to me specifically and said, Hey, uh, will you be my friend? And I, I told him no, Wubby. And I thought it was over, but the very next day, as if that conversation hadn't happened at all, he came up to me again. <laughs> And I was in kindergarten, mind you. I told him no again. And every day of every day of the entire school year, this child came up to me and wanted to be my friend. And I couldn't do it, Wubby. The following year, he wasn't in school. His parents had pulled him entirely because he couldn't make a single friend. Uh, I think we had maybe some kind of a phone connection issue there. I'm not sure what happened. The call was dropped, not on my side. But uh, with that being said, I, I don't know. Straight to hell. Is Father Wubby? You're, I, you're live. Hello? Oh, shit. Am I actually? I'm so sorry. That's okay. This is Father Wubby. 
Do you have a sin to confess? Okay. So, like a year ago, I was taking the bus home, and I always take this bus, mm-hmm. and there's always this guy, and he's like, just kind of makes noises, whatever. Not a big deal. Like, What kind of noises then, does he make? He, um, you could call it special needs noises. <laughs> Can I hear an example of what you think a special needs noise? Okay, so we'll be on the bus, and someone will get off, and then he'll, they'll go, thank you, <laughs> or then just go, eh. <laughs> Please continue. So he always makes these noises, and I just got used to it. I wear headphones, it's fine. But one day, this, like, family got on the bus, and it's like two kids, a mom, and like a very, very visibly special needs disabled kid, and he's making his own noises. So they are sitting like across from me and the two kids like look embarrassed and the mom looks just exhausted. So when the kid makes the noise, the adult makes the noise. But when the adult does it, kind of just sounds like he's mocking him. Oh, it was a perfect storm. Just kept doing it. And the mom was getting visibly upset and I'm sitting across from her. So I was like, oh, I like I got it. You know, I'll be nice. Oh, no. I ended up going up to the guy and being like, are you going to, like, shut the fuck up, or are you just going to continue being a prick? And he very sincerely turned to me, and he goes, I'm so sorry, I have Tourette's, that's why I have this sign on my back, and I've never noticed it, and I was taking the bus for, like, six months, and I didn't know what to do, so I panicked, and I didn't say anything. I just went, okay, and I sat down, and then when the bus was like he made another noise and i just got right off the bus i didn't say anything and then i just when i walked i just heard the woman yell at him and i felt so bad and i was literally i kept taking the long way home for like two months until i quit and that was a big reason why i quit because i just did not want to see them ever again <clears throat> well that is deplorable truly deplorable what was your name it's sam okay sam Sam, I, I, I want to find something redeeming in your story, Sam, but you made it very clear that for six months you saw this guy have random outbursts on this bus. <laughs> Why did you feel the need to not only interject, <laughs> but to be so mean to the man with Tourette's? Like a, I just thought he was some random dude being a dick. Sam, have you ever seen the movie Joker? With Quinoa Phoenix? Yes. How does it feel knowing that you possibly just created the next Joker? You know, Sam, you don't have to answer that, but but um, here's what I'm going to say. You having to live with that is pain enough knowing that this man talks about these issues and he probably thinks about you. He probably cites <laughs> this story as an in fact of Tourette. If Tourette's guy is watching, I would love to hear his version of this story. I do think you should have gotten on that bus the next day and apologized to him profusely. The fact that you just avoided it shows a little self- Oh, goddamn, bitch! Okay, thank you. Yeah, okay. Oh my god. That is so horrible! Oh, uh, what a roller coaster! Alright, let's- let's- do, I'm having fun. I kinda wanna do another one. You guys wanna do another one? Let's do another one. This is Father Wubby. Oh, holy shit. Okay, so I got a story for you. I don't know how bad it is. It depends on how you feel about lobsters. But uh, in high school, I was uh, on the debate team, and we, like every weekend, we would just stay in hotel rooms, basically. Sitting there, and another dude on my team runs in, and he's like, yo, you got to see this, what these guys are doing in the room. And he's like, you just got to come and see it. I walk in the bathroom. These dudes have a fucking lobster in in the bathtub of, like, the hotel room. Like, they went to to a grocery store, got a lobster, and brought it to the hotel room. It, it got to that point where we realized that, like, we don't know how to keep a lobster alive. So we were, like, Googling shit. And so it was like, oh, it needs to be salt water. So we, they literally went and got salt and, like, poured it in the bathtub. I don't think that did well for the lobster. It wasn't looking so good. So, so basically, a guy was like, well, how do we get rid of it? Like, we can't just throw it out or leave it in here, right? Like, tomorrow housekeeping is going to come or whatever. So <laughs> this freshman dude grabs it and legit chucks it out the fucking window we were on like the sixth floor this is this is in boston and he chucked it out into like a courtyard area okay so long story short i'll cut to the end of the story Mm -hmm. it's like three days later 
we go out to the courtyard area to look for it and the dude finds it it's frozen solid like a block like it had been snowing out and there's like three feet of snowpack and he brings it inside and sets it down on the carpet and uh it unfreezes and starts moving around and shit the dude yells runs outside and spikes it into the pavement and it exploded it fucking detonated it was horrifying mm -hmm. but, and I, uh, yeah. I have some questions uh i will say i was a little thrown by you asking how i feel about lobsters I've, I've never considered it why was the lobster purchased in the first place i think that's the main hurdle here because everyone seemed to be standing around going what do we do with this lobster and i think that's something i can sympathize with um, they were, I forgot to, I skipped a very important part of the story. They were oh. fucking around with it. They actually wrapped it up. They figured out, like they found online when they were doing research, that you can keep a lobster alive longer by wrapping it in a damp, like, towel and keeping it in the fridge. So they wrapped this lobster in a towel and kept it in the fridge for a little bit. This is before it was thrown out the window the first time. <laughs> and, um, and then the next day, they actually brought it, like, on the subway and took it around the city with them. And it was really fucking funny. I was actually in a debate round. As I'm in that round, I get a message from them, and I look at it, and it's a picture of the lobster outside of the door of the room I'm sitting in, like wrapped in the towel. And they apparently had taken it around campus that day, and were like trying to pick up girls with it. They were like, do you want to see our lobster? And they were just... Okay, well, uh, I'm going to say, I'm a, in the first half, I would have sided with you, but uh, because of all the hijinks and antics and how many opportunities you had to stop it, I'm saying straight to hell. Straight to hell. I, I, I feel like if I was getting lobster selfies from a friend, I think I would be like, hey, are we having lobster for dinner? And Oh, no, we're trying <laughs> to keep it alive. That's when I would be a little alarmed. Yeah. Okay, anyway, thank you. Uh, straight to hell. Goodbye. Ooh. Oh, my God. I, what is... You know, it really does... This is... I just... Human beings have too much power. Like, you can just go do that. I could go right now and buy a living creature and just... Fuck it. Spike it into the ground, you know? Isn't that crazy? <sighs> anyway, all right, let's get one more call. One more call, and then we're calling it here. One more call. This is Father Wobby. Um, yes, uh, I like. I'm here to confess my sin. And uh, what? Yes. What is your name, young man? My name is Jose. Ah, hola. Oh. So I was in third grade. All right. Mm. I asked. I. I. My stomach feel, feels rumbling. Right. I feel like I have to take the biggest number two ever. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I asked the teacher that if I could go, mm -hmm. and she says yes. And so I walked out the, through the hallway. Basically, this is the past few weeks at that time. I've been thinking about what it will look like to shit in the woman's bathroom. And so, and so I did. And so I have the biggest balls, metaphorical balls ever. And I was like, you know what? Fuck it. And I walked inside that woman's bathroom. All right. I went to the stall in the middle. Because if I went in the last stall, like the one around the edge, it's too obvious. My third grade brain, I think they, I thought the other way. So I basically picked like the first stall, like right there. And then so I sat on the toilet and I took the meanest shit ever that it smells. <laughs> Why did he try to get like some sort of relatability over, you know, like shit in the woman's bathroom as you do? You know, as we've all dreamed about, he didn't fit. I didn't want him to finish. I don't, I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't want him to finish. Uh, this is uh, Father Wubby. Hi, Wubby. Um, you can you can call me Zeno. This is a story back from my time in the army. Um, I was deployed, and my boy, who I was really close with, got put in a uh, position that was a, a authority figure. We uh, weren't allowed to drink energy drinks during the night, and he was, and he kind of said that I couldn't. I said, fuck you. After that, he uh, he made me low crawl through uh, the sewer system of <sighs> the Afghan National Army. I bid my time. I waited. Let a week go by. Let two weeks go by. I took a, a water bottle, filled it with my piss. And I waited until he was gone, and I put it in his sleeping bag at, at uh, nighttime. I did this for about oh, three, four months. Uh, <laughs> they never knew it was me. I got to get serious with this because he's not actually admitting it. Because he would, he would take his sleeping bag and he would like rinse it out because he didn't want to be like a bitch, you know, for like pissing his bed. So I took it up a notch and I, uh, 
I took his shit in the bag, I put it in my pocket, and I waited. I waited until I was able to smear it in his bed. <laughs> I smeared it, and I went to bed, and he was on guard. And so I laid down, I slept, I waited for him to come in, and I heard him get into his sleeping bag. And I was like, he, he's about to blow up. He did it. He slept in it all night. He woke up so pissed off. Everybody got pulled outside. Everybody got smoked. Who did this? Everyone's looking at me because they knew we had beef at this point. I kept my mouth shut. All of these years, they have. I have never made this story to anybody. Thank well, you for letting me have this time. Um, I speak on behalf of God here, and I will say, there is no forgiveness needed here. You did the right thing, and uh, you're an American thank hero you. for that. So thank you, Zeno. Thank you for sharing that with us. Thank you, Zeno. Yo, the military sucks. No, not one more. We're gonna end it there. We got no more. Okay, Pope Wubby's dead. It's over. Kill the music. Oh, that was fun. People are fucking funny, dude.